Greetings guys and gals and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest 6 Air today, gone tomorrow. In the last episode, the Wade Ones gave us a task to navigate these maze-like catacombs and rescue their daughter, Lady Celeste. And what we want to do right off the bat is actually go north here. Going left will just bring you in a circle that uh, has no end, it's just an endless area. Um, so as we might imagine, the catacombs, similar to the labyrinth from King's Quest V, are like a maze, but thankfully the camera angle actually stays consistent this time around and makes it uh, a lot more bearable. The, the uh, catacombs are full of several traps and puzzles though, so we must use our wit and cunning to navigate them, and there's also quite a few items we're going to need to collect while we're here. Um, so let's uh, take a look around, actually. I don't think I really looked much at the uh, rooms of the catacombs. The walls of the catacombs are made of massive stone tiles. That's the north wall of the room. Can we look at the skeletons? Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. Can we actually search the bodies? I didn't try doing that earlier. Alexander examines the stone shelf and the ancient bones, but finds nothing except the dust of the grave. Also, we have to search for the Minotaur that's in this lair and uh, defeat him to save Lady Celeste, uh, the daughter of the Wicked Ones. Don't know if I mentioned that earlier. It's been a while since I've actually uh, recorded an episode of this game. Uh, like I said before, however, the catacombs are not without their traps. And if we actually go south here, we will see the first trap. Which, um, is rather, uh, unforgiving. As he walks through the doorway, Alexander gets a very bad feeling about this room. And you can die. <laughs> yeah, the catacombs are not a, uh, oh. walk in the park without any danger. Next. Don't just wander, Alexander. Let your conscience be your guide. Also, notice that the word guide here is capitalized. That is actually sort of a hint. Um, if you uh, look in your guidebook that came with the game, they actually give you a map of the catacombs and a clue that you're going to need later on. So I already have uh, my map ready with me, um, so I won't really have to worry about that. And we have a bunch of skeletons in this room. The walls of the catacombs are made of massive stone tiles. That's the north wall of the room. And what's with these skeletons down here? The remains of several unfortunate souls haunt the room. <laughs> these bones seem more recent than the ancient catacomb bones that Alexander has seen so far. Perhaps they were victims of the Minotaur. Or perhaps they died while wandering lost in the maze. Three of the skeletons are completely intact. That's right. Um, we are not the first ones to come in here and attempt to defeat the Minotaur. Hopefully we will be more fortunate than these fellows were, however. It does look like a lone skull is on the floor, though. A lone skull lies on the ground among the skeletons. Where the skull came from is a mystery, since the other remains seem to have their skulls intact. Well, if we remember before, a skull was one of the ingredients we needed for one of the spells. Alexander picks up the skull. So we will take that with us. And that's one of the um, several items we're going to need while we're here in the catacombs. And let's continue to go um, back here. And we're going to actually see our first um, puzzle pretty quickly. And similar to the uh, Cliffs of Logic, the, um, well, actually, there's only really one puzzle in here that requires the, uh, the guidebook, and it's the one that we're just about to head to. And it should be straight to the left of here, I believe. And what do we have here? Alexander is standing in a room with a tiled floor. Except for the tiles directly in front of the doors, each tile bears an engraving. Alexander has the feeling that the unique floor isn't merely decorative. Seems we have found ourselves a tile puzzle. Kind of a staple among several uh, 
tombs and burial grounds and the like. Let's see what we have here. It looks like there's a bunch of different pictures on the ground. And if I'm not mistaken, these animals are all predators, except for the rat. Alexander can see nothing to do with the tiles. Oops, I, I clicked this in a bit. So this is clearly the solution. Alexander feels the tile he's standing on shift beneath his feet. Uh-oh. <laughs> we get the, the Graham scream again. <laughs> oh, I just figured I'd like to show that off. And of course I'm thinking of the wrong tile puzzle. Next. Um, let's see here. Three spikes and you're out. Indeed. This is the puzzle that requires the use of the guidebook, because if you read about the Isle of the Sacred Mountain, it tells you that there was an engraving at the beginning of the um, the catacombs that said uh, a small poem, which is a clue to solve this puzzle. It said, I'll put it on the screen for you so you can see, Three roses laid upon the bower, a sky for thee who cuts the flower, or for he who cuts the flower. Um, a crown a dove, most noble race, thy bones make sacred this dread place. So we have to follow the, um, the little poem. So we'll start with the three roses laid upon the bower, the sky for he who cuts the, the flower, a crown, a dove, most noble race, thy bones make sacred this dread place. There we go, puzzle solved. And let's see where we are now. I believe if we go to the left here, we can see something interesting. And who do we have here? Ah, you are a human only and not the monster himself. I heard you coming and thought you were the beast. Did my father send you here to save me? Why, yes he did, but how did you... Hush, there is no time. I think I have discovered the Minotaur's secret exit from the catacombs. Follow me, and we'll both be saved. Well, it seems like we've found Lady Celeste already, and she's found a secret exit to the catacombs. Let's, uh, follow her. Obviously, this is not a trap. I mean, I didn't think that she had sh uh, golden yellow eyes or anything like that, or shining golden eyes. That's odd. Where did she... Go! And, of course, it's a trap. It's always a trap. Boy, that's our third death in this catacomb so far, I think. Oh. I knew that was a death, however. I just wanted to show it off. Don't just wonder, Alexander. And we get the same message from before. I believe her dialogue will get different if you continue to exit and re-enter the room. So I'll make, might, uh, show that off. There you are. Why do you not follow me? Do you wish for death by the Minotaur? Hurry, we can tarry no longer. Uh, I don't believe you just yet. Let's enter and re-enter the room one more time. So, here you still are. You are a coward and a fool. I leave you to your fate. <laughs> yeah, and of course it's Shamir trying to get us killed again. Uh, it's not Celeste right away. Of course it would be just too easy if we had found her already. Speaking of finding things, however, it looks like there's something on the wall in this room. An old wooden shield hangs on the wall. Indeed it does. Can we take it with us? That could be useful. Alexander takes the shield from the wall. A wooden shield could serve protection against uh, some threats. Maybe even that stone archer we saw on the Isle of the Beast that we actually couldn't get by. That may serve as a um, uh, protection Alexander against hears it. Alexander the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. Ooh. Something uh, is near, apparently. Perhaps it's the Minotaur. I don't know. I'll have to continue and find out. Let's go to the west here. And if we go two screens west, we will find another um, important room. And it appears that that's 
skeleton there also has shining golden eyes. Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. Alexander notices that this skeleton has old coins over its eyes. It doesn't seem to be Shamir this time, though. It just has um, coins over the eyes. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. Actually, it turns out that um, I believe in real life several old uh, uh, rituals or cultures or whatever actually would put coins over the eyes of their dead to serve as payment uh, for their for Charon, the ferryman who would take you to the underworld. So that's actually um, based off a, tr a true um, uh, practice, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And we want to save here because we have another, oops, we have another uh, puzzle for us in the next room. It's a trap. The doors have sealed Alexander inside. And the ceiling is coming down. It's a trap! It's a trap! Yeah, well, of course we had to throw that in. Um... The ceiling is coming down at a rapid rate. We have to find a way to uh, disarm this trap and fast. The gears are working furiously to lower the ceiling. Their great cogs interlock perfectly. Well, the gears are working to lower the ceiling. If we might be able to find a way to um, jam the gears, maybe we could get out of here. And uh, I believe in several old Indiana Jones movies, I think it was the second or, or not the second, I forget which one, but I think in one of them, uh, Indiana Jones actually... Um, was for Emily for disarmed a trap like this by throwing a skull into the works. Let's see if we can do that. Desperate to stop the crushing ceiling, Alexander throws a skull into the grinding gears. The skull is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The skull begins to bulge. Uh-oh! With a sudden lurch, the ceiling completes its descent. Yikes! And presses Alexander into the floor like a bug under a heel. That skull wasn't strong enough to endure the pressure. And neither is Alexander's. And yet another death. Unfortunately, the skull does not work uh, like it did in oh. Indiana Jones. Next! Alexander never was much good at squash. Well... There is another item we have in our inventory that might be a little more durable than a skull. It's a trap. The door and the right. ceiling is... We've heard that part already. Uh, we can use the brick that we found on the Isle of the Beast near that gardener to jam the gears. Move. Alexander throws a brick into the grinding gears. There we go. The brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to a halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap is sprung. And we've completed another one of the traps in the catacombs. Can we actually look at these designs? Alexander is standing in a trap room with a... Oh, I thought it would give us a unique um, message if we looked at the... Uh, uh, the decor on the uh, border. Similar to how in uh, King's Quest... Or not King's Quest, sorry. In... Um, Space Quest Alexander 4, they say, you can't actually see growling, that. So faint as to seem born of his fired imagination rather than of any living creature. Well, it seems we're hearing more sounds. <laughs> I think I'm talking over this stuff happening. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll check the recording and see if you can um, hear more easily. We want to go uh, north from here. I believe we have everything um, we need for this part of the catacombs. Because we're actually about to head to... Uh, a second floor of the catacombs. I'm going to save here just in case, but I'm pretty sure we have everything we need. Sounds! A trap floor! <laughs> Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. 
And we are in a dark room, it seems. Uh, let's take a look at our inventory. Do we have anything here that could uh, prove useful for light? We do indeed have the tinder box from earlier that we can light. Alexander takes the candle from his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. Aha! So that's why it's dark in here. A torch is out. Alexander lights the extinguished torch and puts his tinderbox away. There we go. We've provided light for the, the uh, lower level of the catacombs. And like the brick and um, two other items that we're going to be using later, uh, it is one of the four items, uh, the tinderbox is one of the four items that you're going to need before you enter the catacombs. And, um, but of course, like I mentioned earlier, um, you'll be notified if you don't have everything you need to, um, uh, to complete the catacombs before you go in. So, let's see here, we have a ways to go still. Somewhere, far off into the catacombs, the sounds of hooves faintly echo. The sounds of hooves faintly echo. Yeah, we're probably close to the, uh, closer to the Minotaur now that we're further into the catacombs, I would assume. Let's see, I think we want to go south from here. I'm just going to save just in case. Because this lower level of the catacombs is actually much larger than the upper level. I'm going to go a couple more screens south. Oh, I heard the Minotaur that time. He's uh, definitely closer, I think. Alexander hears the sound of a wild beast again. This time, so loud that the creature itself seems to be in the same room with him. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. There are noises coming from the other side of the east wall? Well, we have an item that can let us look through walls. A hole in the wall that we picked up on the Isle of Wonder. So maybe we can see what's going on over there. Alexander puts the hole in the wall on the east wall. The hole in the wall trembles slightly with dread at the clammy feeling of the stones. Can we take a look what's going on? Alexander peers through the hole in the wall and sees just another room in the catacombs. Aha! Not just another room at all. So that's why Alexander couldn't find the Minotaur's lair. At least Alexander now knows the lair exists, somewhere in the maze on the other side of this wall. While Alexander contemplates what he's just seen, the hole in the wall, frightened by the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Alexander hopes the little creature finds its way home to the Isle of Wonder. And we've now learned that the Minotaur has a secret passage in his, um in his lair that will uh, bring him to the, well, to the actual lair, of course, and is hidden behind a tapestry. So if we can find that room that the Minotaur was just in, we may be able to, um, to find, or to actually take on the Minotaur himself. So, uh, like I said before, this lower level is a lot bigger. I'm going to be uh, going a different path to get there, but, um, Thankfully, the design of the catacombs is actually quite a logical design looking at it. Uh, it's not like completely off the wall like uh, Mordak's Labyrinth in um, King's Quest V was. So we just kind of want to follow this um, follow this chain of rooms uh, until we uh, can go north again. And so we want to go two screens east here. We want to ignore, there's going to be a path to the south in this room that we want to ignore. And uh, we should be there pretty soon. Just want to go north here. And then east here. And then we just want to keep going north from this point on. And we should find the, uh, the room with the tapestry that we just saw the uh, Minotaur in. Here we are. 
There's the tapestry on the wall. A very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. I believe if you didn't actually see the Minotaur enter the, um, or use the button behind this thing, you couldn't actually use it. Hmm. This tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Unlatch the latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I'm not mistaken, the Minotaur is likely on the other side, or through this um, secret passage. So it's probably a good idea to save before we go in. No! I beg of you! Please don't hurt me! Your struggles are useless. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. And we have found the Minotaur! And apparently he's been taking acting lessons from uh, Sir, Gwe <laughs> Sir Grey Wolf from the last game, as the voices sound quite similar. Can we uh, approach this bully? Excuse me. I demand the release of that maiden this instant, you fiend. Lady Celeste looks wildly around the room for the source of the strange voice and spots Alexander. You there, human! Help me! Help! <sighs> Who dares enter my lair? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. Until he can back away no more. Now where to, little man? And, if those who uh, saw the thumbnail or the box art of this game, this scene may look very familiar. Alexander approaching a minotaur in a fiery room, while we have a winged one's girl in bondage, and we found Lady Celeste, of course, uh, on this strange sacrificial altar. And we have to find a way to deal with this minotaur, because he's about to approach us and attack. Thankfully, we do have a um, large fiery pit right behind us. Can we take a look at it? A pit has caved in the floor in one corner of the minotaur's lair. Flames rise from the pit as though from the throat of a dragon trapped in the earth. The fire makes the lair unbearably hot. Indeed. Thankfully, the setup here isn't too difficult. We just have to find a way to trick the minotaur into uh, avoiding us or charging into the um, flaming pit. And due to the fact that a minotaur is very similar to a bull, it's kind of like a bull-man hybrid, they probably have a, um, a version to the color red, similar to how uh, bullfighters will often use red capes to attract um, the attention of a bull. So let's use that. Alexander, Look here, you bully! Nice, bright red. Red. Now you die. The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you all right? No, I am not all right. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry, let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. I can't wait that long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, all right. I, I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. That's very generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? Unfortunately, she doesn't seem to be uh, very thankful that we saved her. But it seems like most of the winged ones are jerks anyway, so I guess it makes sense.
The winged one's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. Oh, that crow there has golden eyes. Lady Celeste, I'd be well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellect. Yes, me lady. Now bring him along. I'm going home. Yeah, there goes Shamir, yeah. And the uh, dialogue box for those guys still doesn't seem to be working. you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So I thank you. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred, but he is my liege, and if Princess Kasima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the City of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azure. I will respect your wishes. And we are going to find the, uh, the Oracle who lives in the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Hail to thee, great Oracle. Lord Azure sends you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amid bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers, and yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration, a dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Ooh. Oh, oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the Dark Force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. 
be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druid's nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle. All right, we've actually learned quite a bit from the oracle there. We have learned, I'm going to save now that we've um, completed the catacombs. Actually, no, I'll save with my uh, normal save now. Um, actually, I'll save my fix. <laughs> I can't decide. I'm so indecisive today. Um, she has told us that we have a choice to make. We can save two restless spirits, or we can enter through the castle, and whatever we do will make us um, face a dark force, which apparently is shrouded in a black cloak. So that's all we know about our villain uh, so far. But we'll have to learn more about the... Um, mysterious villain, and see if we can actually visit these druids next time on Let's Play King's Quest VI, air today, gone tomorrow, so I'll see you then.